is Adobe's Photoshop Express the best free image editor? That's what we're here to find out. Photoshop Express is a free photo editing product that is meant for the on-the-go sort of speak editing. Uh, similar to most modern phone camera software, it has all those features and more. It's available for Apple iOS, Android, Windows Phone, and you can even install it as a software on your desktop. It can also be accessed as an online editor on most popular browsers as well. I can comfortably say that this can be accessed almost anywhere, which makes it a truly diverse product. So let's test out some of its features. And I'm going to use the online version of this, and I want you guys to know that the mobile versions are different. And as a matter of fact, the mobile versions has some more features like collage makers, uh, the ability to add text on top of photos, and use raw photos directly from the device. Uh, but with that said, let's get right into it. And if you guys want to follow along, you can click in the link in the description below and it'll take you right to this page. And you can browse through the site and read all about the features it has, but uh, we're just going to go ahead and click on this link right here to edit photos now. And the first thing it's going to ask you to do is to select an image to edit. If you don't have one ready, then you can just go ahead and select one of these sample images to follow along. But I have an image ready and all I have to do is click on this upload file button right here. And this is going to you know, prompt me to find my image on my computer somewhere, or I can just drag and drop a picture right into the area just like this. Uh, which, by the way, I got this royalty-free image from FreePix, if you're wondering where I get some of my stock photos. And I have an article that showcases my favorite places to get royalty-free images, and I'll leave that in the description below. So now it's going to automatically adjust the image to fit the workspace here. And you can see that it adjusts the image down to 25% to fit the screen, which means it's probably a pretty large image for my screen resolution, which I'm running at 1080p here. And you'll see a few options to adjust your image on the left here. But first, let's click on the resize image. And once you do that, the right sidebar will appear, and you can see how large the image actually is. And it's 5400 by 3600 pixels, which is well over the 4K resolution, and it's 58 megabytes in size. Now, some platforms have a file size limit that you can upload to their site, and I can tell you that 58 megabytes is too large for most social media sites. So we'll go ahead and change the height over here to 1080 pixels, just because it's standard HD resolution, and it fits my 1080p monitor very well. And you can see that the width and the scale percentage got adjusted as well in correlation to the pixels that we just adjusted, and more importantly, the image size is much, much smaller. And let's zoom the image in a bit so we can see the entire picture. Um, now, we can take it to 100%, but uh, you can zoom in further if you want. And you can click this little hand icon right here and move it to the location that you want by just by clicking on it and dragging it on the picture. But I don't need that right now, so I could just go ahead and click on the hand icon again and turn it off and then zoom into 100%. Um, we'll, we'll zoom it in once more. All right, so we go back over here. You'll notice this little lock icon here. If you click it to unlock, it will let you increase or decrease your height and width independently of each other. So let's say for some reason I wanted to change only the height of the picture. I can just unlock uh, my dimensions here, and then I can use the arrow to increase or decrease my height just like so. And it's pretty slow, so I can just go ahead and put a number I want, say like, I don't know, 540, and it will only change the height, but it looks kind of weird. So I can just undo the change by clicking this button up here. And I can also redo my last changes. Or I can just reset the whole thing, um, that changes that I made in this whole section, by pressing the reset button here. And that's going to undo all the changes I did in this section only. So if you made adjustments in any of the other sections below here, um, it won't affect anything. So let's undo that, and we'll go undo it again. And great, we're back to where we left off. And right below in this section right here, you will see guidelines of common photo sizes in inches or in centimeters and the associated pixels that are recommended for each size. And this is really convenient and a really nice touch from Photoshop Express, especially if you're trying to rescale old photos that are maybe you scanned in somewhere and that are, are unsure of the resolution that worked best. Well, this is a little guideline that you can use to help you scale up or scale down. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the crop and straighten feature over here. And we'll click on that, and once we do, we'll apply the edits because we want to keep the changes anyway. Um, so we, if we go over to this section over here, you can see that you can rotate the image in any direction. You can rotate it to the right or rotate it to the left with these two buttons right here. And then you can also flip the image horizontally or vertically. And also, there's a slider right here where you can use to straighten your image. So, and 
and, uh, this is quite useful if you have an image that's you know taken in an angle and you want to straighten it out a little bit and you can use this just to go um, I think it's about like a 45 degree angle straightened so you can use it like that uh, but this image is not needed for that so we'll go ahead and reset some of the image changes that we made and let me close this real quick but uh, in this section you can see all the aspect ratios that you can adjust your image to and you can rotate the aspect ratio with this little button right here and it makes it uh, a vertical crop or vice versa while maintaining the aspect ratio of that area and this section is really convenient because it has tons of popular presets that you could use for a variety of social media platforms for instance if I want to use this photo for my Instagram profile all I need to do is select the Instagram session right here and then select the Instagram profile preset and it'll automatically crop my image to the correct size so you don't have to guess the dimensions for that platform which is pretty awesome and if I want to use it for I don't know Instagram stories then I can just click on this preset right here and it'll crop it to that dimension or an Instagram post and I'll just you know crop it to that dimension as well one thing I don't like about this is that every time I choose a different preset it'll crop the image from the last crop position like if I keep cycling through these presets here it'll keep getting smaller and smaller it sees that the last crop position as the original image dimension and it'll crop it from there the workaround for this is that each time you want to switch to a different preset you'll need to reset all your cropping changes but this gets very annoying especially if you have to do a lot of rotation and straightening edits because each time you reset you have to redo all your edits and I would much rather the presets crop from the original image instead from the last crop position. Alternatively, you can just manually adjust the position, and frankly, that's what I do anyway. Like, I'll just go ahead and drag the corners here to make the crop area larger. And this will still keep the aspect ratio that you chose. And you can just drag the, you know, the image into the area that you want to crop, like so. That way, I don't have to reset it every time. And I think everything looks good here so far. So we'll go ahead and save our changes with the crop image button down here. And then we'll go ahead and go over to the touch up feature over here. And the only thing you'll see here is the brush size setting. And every time you change it, the, it makes the brush stroke larger or smaller. And you can see the outline of the stroke size uh, every time you change it by bringing the cursor back over to the canvas. So if I decided to make it larger I can just uh, bring the cursor over to the canvas and it looks like this and if I make it smaller and I take it over to the canvas and it looks kind of like this so but you you know you get the idea now just because there's not many settings here doesn't mean that it's not good and quite the opposite it's pretty awesome so if we take a look at our example here she has a few blemishes or marks on her and let me zoom in a bit so you guys can see it better um, and it's a little bit pixelated but it'll do and let me position the image a bit here um that looks pretty good so she does have a few marks on her and maybe we want to get rid of them all and all i would need to do is click on it like so and voila it's gone and it looks completely natural and we'll do this for a couple other marks here as well I'm not too sure why, but it's acting a little bit slow for me today. All right, so I took away some of the lines up here um, when I did that, uh, but I want to keep those facial lines. So let's go ahead and undo our last change real quick, and we'll zoom in a bit more here. And now you want to change the size of the brush so that it will only affect the mark instead of the lines. And I'll position it to the point where it doesn't affect the lines. And I'll just click. And the mark is gone. And the, but the lines are still there, so that's good. So let's zoom back out. And that looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and check out the Adjust Image section. And before we look at the presets, let's click on the details here. And here is where you can make adjustments to lighting and exposures, contrasts and shadows. You can make any color adjustments like saturations, white balances and temperatures. And you can change the image's clarity and add some vignettes to the image. And it can get a bit overwhelming with all these options uh, that you can change. But it's good to have them if you really want to get precise. Um, anyway, let's reset this and let's check out the presets. And let me minimize this section real quick. And you can see that there are some presets you can choose from to quickly adjust your image without actually adjusting each individual detail to get the same results. So if I expand the sections again, 
you'll see tons of image variations that you can use instantly to make adjustments to your picture. Let's say I want to make a image black and white. I can just head on over to the B and W section here. And I don't know, I'll, I'll just use this uh, flat preset right here. And if you click and hold your mouse over the image, you can see what the original image looks like. And if you let go of your mouse, then you'll go back to the preset that you chose. And it's a comparing feature for you to preview the adjustments before you commit. But you can always use the redo button or undo button if you didn't like any of the changes. So you can use the slider here to adjust how much black and white contrast you want on your image. Um, and you can also click on this view more button right here and it takes us back over to the detail sections that we were at earlier and you can see what options that preset changed on the image. And you can fine tune the adjustments to your liking. And I think Adobe did a pretty good job here. But let's see, let's go back and I think, I don't know, I'm going to use the vintage look right here. Uh, I think it looks pretty good here. So I'm going to go ahead and save the image adjustments down here. All right, so let's say I want to remove the background and use something else. And all I would need to do is select the move background over here. And it automatically begins to remove the background. It takes a few seconds to do that. So now it puts focus on the girl here and the background is checkered, which means it's going to be transparent. And you can blur the background here. But if you do that, um, it's going to, you know, remove the transparency and put the background back and adds blur. Uh, but you can change the amount of blur it has by using the slider bar right here. Or you can just replace it with background with one of these presets down here. And all the way down the bottom here, you can customize the background color that you want by using one of the presets here. And it, it's not perfect. The AI does miss some hair strands. And it's kind of a bit too cardboard cutout looking. And this is an issue that I see with most background removers, not just Photoshop Express. But it does a pretty good job for being a free service. And I would argue that it does a little bit better than the other services. But generally, I like to use a light background because it does leave a little bit of white haze around the subject after it removes the background. And using a light background helps cover that up and it makes it look a little bit more natural. One thing that could make this even a better service is that it lets you use your own backgrounds. But unfortunately, there's no option for that. But alternatively, you can just save the image with the transparent background and use it with another program to do that. And let me show you what I mean. So let's go ahead and apply the image with the transparent background here. And then we can just go ahead and click the download button up over here. And you can change the file names from here. And you can also choose uh, the image format that you want. You can only choose from two, at least for the um, online uh, browser version. But uh, for the vast majority of users, uh, these two fo formats will probably work for most of their needs. Uh, but since we do have a, a transparent background on this, uh, it's best to go with the PNG formatting because transparent backgrounds is not going to work with JPEGs. So we'll choose the PNG formatting and there's no uh, slider adjustments that we could use for quality, unlike the JPEGs here. Uh, and this should put this in our downloads folder or wherever the destination you set for your browser. And here's an example of trying to use a JPEG with a transparent background. And you can see that even though that we remove the background in the image, it still puts a placeholder for that transparent background. So let's go ahead and remove the JPEG image here. Oh, and by the way, I'm using Snapper, and you can use other tools like Canva as well. And I have an in-depth tutorial that well, I'll leave in the description below if you're interested in learning. So now I'll bring in my PNG image here, and the background is transparent. So that looks pretty good here, and I can actually probably use this for a thumbnail. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and head back to Photoshop Express. And we're back here at Photoshop Express. And let's go ahead and put the background back on this image. And we'll head over to um, the art effects here. And I'll apply the edits that we just made. And there's some pretty cool effects that you can add to your image here. And you can make the image look like an oil painting, a cartoon, and a couple other options here. And although you need to sign up to use some of these more popular image effects, um, it is still free to sign up, so keep that in mind. But there aren't many effects that you can use, but if you combine these effects with some of the other image adjustments we did earlier, you can create some unique looking designs, but I do wish there was a few more effects that you can use. Maybe it'll add more in the future, but you know, who knows. But let's go ahead and choose an effect so you guys can see. And I'll just use this uh, pop art one, and it takes a bit to, you know, apply the effect. And that's what it's going to look like. And you can choose other effects as well, like this cartoon effect here. 
and some of them allow you to adjust the intensity of the effect with the slider right here. And you can make it look a little bit less cartoony with the slider. And once you have applied the effect on the image before, like we did with the previous one, you can, you know, if you want to go back, it doesn't need to apply the effect again. It'll instantly apply the effect. In conclusion, Photoshop Express is not perfect, but I still highly recommend this free service. Photoshop Express has its fine points too. Its ability to resize and crop an image is one of the best I've used for a free product. And 10 out of 10 times that I had to remove a background from a portrait photo, it does a pretty good job. Its touch-up features is pretty amazing, and once you get used to it, then you can make an object appear like it was never there in the first place. If this was a paid product, then this review would probably turn out a little bit different. And since I'd rather pay for a full feature product like Adobe's Creative Cloud to be able to fully utilize more advanced features and integrations, but that is my preference. And obviously, if you need those advanced features, maybe the Creative Cloud might be for you as well. Or you may consider using the full-fledged Photoshop or Lightroom. But as a product that's geared towards quick edits and with some decent functionality that's free, it's a great value that I can recommend. And now will be a good time for you to like this video if you thought it was helpful and follow me so you'll know when the next video gets released. But that pretty much shows the workflow of Adobe's Photoshop Express. And if you want more details, then go ahead and head over to my website where you'll find an article that outlines the pros and cons of Photoshop Express. Also, feel free to check out my channel to see other related content that might pique your interest. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.